Hi, I'm Manu Makoski Papioni, and I'm the assistant coach for women's soccer at the University of Maryland. I'm a mentee for the Modern Soccer Coach Worldwide Mentorship Program under the guidance of Lisa Fallon, who works with Cork City FC and the Northern Ireland men's national team. My life motto is live the game, love the game. When I sat down to put together my coaching philosophy, I thought that I should look at why I coach soccer. With over 30 years of playing soccer and about half that coaching, it is obvious that soccer has been a big part of my life. I coach because of the positive playing experience I had, and I want my players to have the same thing. Coaching is not just for teaching technique and tactics, but it is a great platform to develop and lead others. When it comes down to it, I love competition, value discipline, and admire hard work. My coaching philosophy stems from three different aspects. My playing experience, which takes up most of my philosophy, watching and learning the game as a player and as a coach, and many non-soccer coaching experiences. Let's start with my youth playing experience, which can be summed up by this quote. I survived because the fire inside me burned brighter than the fire around me. Despite always being the smallest one out there, I excelled in the game because of my speed and quickness, and I played with the mentality of being the biggest player out there. Since coaches valued my work ethic, they helped develop my technical ability. In my teen years, I learned the importance of soccer fitness and the necessity of being able to play the entire 90 minutes. Soccer was also an escape from off-the-field issues I was dealing with, and I was motivated by honors and awards, which my coaches recognized and encouraged. I have had the great honor of representing my country. In 2002, right before I went off to college, I was part of the under-19 national team that won the first-ever FIFA Under-19 Women's World Cup. Our head coach, Tracy Leone, says it all about this experience. The mindset when putting on the U.S. national team jersey is one of unparalleled pride, honor, and appreciation. We feel so fortunate to represent the greatest country in the world. Tracy and her coaching staff really helped steer me in the right direction on and off the field. I went through a complete attitude adjustment where I bought into the team first mentality. Gratitude and appreciation became my focus and I made good lifestyle and athletic choices. The national team environment was just an overall higher level of all aspects of the game, technical, tactical, mental, physical, off the field, and professionalism. Successful people do not decide their future. They decide their habits, and their habits decide their future. During my college student-athlete experience is when I hit the turning point in my decision to play pro. At Arizona State, Ray and Tracy Leone and Mike Calise really helped me gain self-confidence and self-expression in my play. Despite some rough times off the field, soccer yet again became my focus. We were a tight-knit family all on the same mission. As a team, we increased our tactical understanding and training habits while developing leaders and team players. I have had the privilege of being coached by Tony DeChico for two seasons with the Soccer Plus Connecticut Reds, the semi-pro team he so humbly decided to manage. This quote summarizes my experience being around one of the greatest coaches in the world. It takes courage to dream big and then allow nothing to prevent you from realizing that dream. Tony and Lisa Cole really prepared us for a professional environment. They knew our dreams were big. We all wanted to play pro. Training sessions were challenging but fun. Playing semi-pro was a big sacrifice financially and time-wise, so this is where the Reds, coaches, and team really lean on each other for encouragement and mental toughness. I also played for Charlie Namo with the New Jersey Wildcats for a few seasons. He was so passionate about the game that it translated over into our play. Training sessions were fast-paced because he really valued teaching us to play quicker. Playing pro is a big risk. I knew that going into it and I was prepared for anything to happen. But it was my pro coaches that made me realize that it is worth it all. The more you are willing to risk and fail, the closer you are to greatness. With three years playing in the U.S., in two different pro leagues, and two years playing in Europe, each season with a different organization, I've been exposed to a variety of tactics and team management styles. I've experienced the nerves of being drafted, the disappointments of teams and leagues folding, being allocated to another market, the utter pain of an ACL tear just days into preseason, going overseas into a new culture, twice over, and making the decision to retire after multiple concussions. Despite the physical and mental demands of playing pro, I really enjoyed playing. In addition to valuing winning, my coaches also emphasized a deeper level of tactical understanding and a high work ethic. After making the difficult decision to retire, I took a few months off to recover, but I was quickly back in the game, 
this time stepping into a new role as a coach. I learned quite early that connecting with the players and earning their trust was the first thing that I needed to do. Players don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. The month after graduating from Arizona State, I broke my leg, so my playing career was put on hold. I started grad school to earn my MBA at the University of New Haven, a Division II school in my home state, Connecticut. Brendan Faraday, who is now the head coach at Stony Brook University, taught me about college recruiting, planning training sessions, and team management. I also spent some time coaching for youth clubs, including Yankee United and Connecticut ODP. Later on, after my pro career ended, I spent some time coaching with April Cater and Dave Clark in the U.S. Soccer Training Centers where our mission was to identify the next level of youth players. Throughout my time playing pro, I helped start a youth girls academy in an already dense club market in Connecticut called Girls Can Football. We had a product that was like no other. All female professional soccer players teaching the game to young girls. The director, Kara McCormick, played pro and was a member of the Irish national team. We also had pro and national team players, Tiffany Weimer and Alyssa Nair, as part of the organization. With the younger kids, we really broke down the game into technical tasks with simple steps. We also taught them how to keep the ball through escape moves, purposeful possession, and under-pressure decision-making. In order for them to learn the game tactically, we had them watch games and write down in their soccer journals what they noticed and liked, and then we would have a discussion about it at the next training session. With the older kids, we emphasized speed of play, combinations, and creativity. We had college recruiting seminars to really guide them in their process. As a player, I really focused on my training habits, technically and physically. In addition to coaching teams, I enjoyed training individuals and small groups. My focus was encouraging them, challenging them with decisions during technical tasks, and guiding them in their strength and fitness. Right before I came to Maryland, I was coaching at a small Christian school called Christian Heritage School in my hometown, Trumbull, Connecticut. This is where I really got to employ my own philosophy which included on and off the field biblical principles, including teamwork, sportsmanship, hard work, and encouragement. Soccer did matter to these high school girls, but it was a great opportunity to really be a role model for them. I really have had some awesome coaches in my playing career who are still coaching at high level. I've coached against some of them and it's been enlightening to see another side of their coaching philosophy. What is great about my coaching philosophy is that I can pick and choose the coaching styles and philosophies for my former coaches that I want to employ in my own philosophy. For example, Steve Beeks, my Orange United coach in Finland, really helped me develop my first touch. I had a great first touch to begin with. I mean, by that point in my career, I should have had a great first touch. But he really worked with me on exactly where it went. Did it beat a line? Did it give me more time and space on the ball? Did it serve a purpose? I hate to admit it, but I really didn't start watching the game from a learning and development perspective until the end of my college days. Growing up, I played mostly attacking positions, but with the under-21 national team, I started learning how to play outside back. I knew I needed to learn how to play all the positions, not just the glorified goal-scoring ones. That's when I started to watch Ashley Cole with Chelsea and Danny Alves with Barcelona. I started to embody these great attacking outside backs in my own play. I continue to be a fan of both clubs, really admiring Chelsea's grit and Barcelona's purposeful possession. I've also been attracted to the consistency and playing style of the German men's national team since they won the World Cup in 2014. I've had the opportunity to be in a role of a coach in non-soccer arenas, including marketing and social media, the fitness, strength, and conditioning industry, and through blogging and writing. With my spinning and boot camp classes, I would always post inspiring quotes and instruct in a demonstrative way, joining in on the rides and exercises. Now, for my current coaching role. Coaching and mentoring these Terps have been a challenging but rewarding experience. This quote sums it up. You can motivate by fear, and you can motivate by rewards, but both these methods are only temporary. The only lasting thing is self-motivation. At this point in these student-athlete lives, it is about winning and scoring goals, getting good grades, staying out of trouble, making their parents happy, and dealing with the stress from it all. My role as an assistant coach at Maryland has many facets. 
The biggest one is connecting with the players through listening to what they have to say and sharing my own experiences. My goal is to figure out a way to motivate them so that they buy in and therefore become self-motivated. Most of the time, I have to be creative. The picture to the right is one example of a hashtag game day photo I've used in our group chat. On Mondays, which is usually our day off, I also send them a hashtag Monday motivation photo and quote. The rest of the soccer stuff just comes with the job. Running one-on-one -on -one small group training, putting together video analysis and opponent scouting reports, recruiting youth players to become Terps, conducting individual and team meetings, dealing with off-the-field issues, doing administrative and office work, anticipating and filling the head coach's needs, running ID clinics and coaching at camps, and finally networking and connecting with club and college coaches. My philosophy can be broken down into three areas. Developing the total player, implementing tactical understanding, and incorporating other principles. For me, player development is the most important. I want to create a personal connection with a player and figure out what their why is. Why do they play the game? Why do they do the things they do? I'm interested in developing a process with them where we go over goal setting, create a plan of action, and review everything at the end of a certain period of time. My emphasis is on discipline, training habits, and soccer fitness, while also having passion and enjoyment for the game. Through obstacles, trials, and setbacks, my players gain the mental strength and confidence they need. Once player development is where it needs to be, then I believe that tactical implementations will be most accepted and employed by a team. I value structured creativity, with attacking third anything goes on the ball, and in the defensive and middle third, discipline and organization is paramount. In possession and out of possession, my theme is what I call one ball connecting all. There is only one ball and with every movement there must be player movement, offensively and defensively. I emphasize all of my players' understanding and applying every position's roles and responsibilities. My center back must know what our center forward's job is, and vice versa. Every player must attack and every player must defend. I recognize two-way players and teams who have an attacking mentality and know how to defend and make the space smaller. Since player development is so important in my coaching philosophy, there needs to be principles that form the bedrock of a strong coaching philosophy focused on good morals and values, positive thinking, and mental toughness. Through Christian principles and different leadership and psychology resources, I have created a strong foundation to my soccer coaching philosophy. The breakdown of my future players and teams are based on who I was as a player. I do understand that every player has different strengths and weaknesses, but I know the impact the game had on me as a player on and off the field. My philosophy aims to develop creative and positive decision makers, resilient and relentless fighters, fit, technical and tactical wizards, and strong leaders and cooperative team players. I know that there are some challenges that I will face in developing and implementing my philosophy. The downside of my playing career has been the multiple concussions, with the most recent one a little over a year ago. This past year has been a major physical and mental battle against the repercussions including daily debilitating migraines, nerve surgery, and an intense physical therapy program. On the field coaching, technologies, and daily tasks have been threatening to the recovery process. However, I've seen a lot of progress with the physical therapy treatment. Another challenge I face is my vocal tone and volume while coaching. Learning how to carry my voice in the right tone would give what I have to say a stronger effect. As a player, I know how to do certain things on the field, so I have been very comfortable with on the field demonstrating as my coaching style. With my head trauma, I have been fortunately forced to the sideline, where I need to readjust my viewpoint of the game and therefore figure out another way to coach. Finally, through my training habits, I have developed a perfectionist mentality. It is a blessing and a curse in itself. I do things exceptionally well, but sometimes it takes a long time to get it done. Creating training session plans or putting together game recap videos can be really affected by this. To sum it all up, my philosophy is built mostly on the positives from my playing career. I recognize the value and importance of an on and off the field communication and connection with my players. Feedback and a relationship is crucial for players to trust in what you have to say. I recognize work ethic and confidence with training habits. My style of play is creative attacking and disciplined defending. Players must have passion and respect for the game. Finally, everyone in my organization, including coaches and players, must constantly be learning and adapting. Thank you for your time and learning about my philosophy.